to have a relationship with a wild creature, first you have to have a relationship with yourself. You have to know who you are. Because these animals are not automatically going to trust anything. These animals have to worry about survival. They have to worry about eating. And they have to worry about being eaten. And, and accomplish the task of raising new babies to perpetuate the species. I was up in Yosemite National Park. And I just walked off the trail by about 20 foot, sat on this log, and, and went into, into a, a meditative zero space. And all of a sudden, what I thought was just a little landscape started to become full of all these critters. The, the insects started coming out, and the birds started coming down to eat the insects, and there was just incredible activity going on around me that was not happening until I settled myself into that zero state. And I was just sitting there for 15, 20 minutes watching all this go on when I heard what sounded like a father's son walking down the trail talking. Oh, Dad. And as soon as the voice was heard, all these little things skittered away and underneath everything and just camouflaged with the environment as if they didn't exist. When we go out into nature, a lot of people will want the animals to come to them. And in their mind, they're going, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. If you saw somebody who was attractive and you wanted to start a conversation with them, would you walk over to them and go, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, I love you, I love you, I love you. The biggest creep in the world, I'd call the police on you. If we're always pushing and always doing our human ways of, of domineering a landscape with our presence, these other living beings are just going to move away from us. They're not going to want to deal with our arrogance and, and, and the energy that we're putting out there. What we need to do is go to that zero point, go to that, that place of quietness inside where we can start to have relationships and start to understand what's going on around us. To have a relationship with a wild creature has a lot to do with respect understanding the living being that's in front of you and that it is alive so it has all the rights that it needs to exist. It doesn't need a manifesto so humans can prove that it has some sort of benefit to humans so we, we now can keep this animal alive. But these animals are extremely aware and conscious beings for what they have to do in this world. They're not aware like humans are, but we're not aware like they are. When they look out of their eyes, they don't see what we see. And then some of them see ultraviolet light. Some of them can see very clearly at hundreds of yards, can read a newspaper. Some of them can't see more than a foot away from their head. Some of them see colors. Some of them don't see colors. When they listen with their ears, the, the, what they hear is not the same as we hear. When, when they taste, the taste buds are different. When they smell, some of them can smell hundreds of times better than we can. Some of them can hardly smell at all. They all have their own input of senses and their own sense of being of who they are and how they react to the world around them. And then we as human beings have the ability to reach out to them, and they have the ability to reach out to us. When the being of that wild animal, the being of that human inside you, are yearning to communicate, and yearning for a relationship, and it touches, that's the magic. with my wolf, she really helped me with the meditative mindfulness practice. Because if I was in this wolf's enclosure and I started to think about something else, immediately, within seconds, that wolf knew I was not 100% with her. And she would lift up her lip and start growling at me, telling me, you are here with me now, you be here. Don't think about other things. Don't be outside this thing. 
be with the magic that's taking place with me and you at this moment. She was physically telling me, meditate, be still. Meditation is not always with your eyes closed, being remote from humans and remote from everything. But a lot of it has to do with what happens when your eyes are open and you're walking around in this world. Who are you? Are you out for yourself? Are you becoming a martyr? Are you judging everything by standards that you're not even sure of? Maybe you can just be who you are. Because we all have a self-narrative about who we are. But like any story, we can change it. We have the power of the pen, which is our consciousness. We have the power of rewriting our own story, which is inner work. And it's just as important as outer work. It really helps clear you up because when you're cleared up inside, these animals tend to want to look at you and, and they're attracted to you. 